starting now. Hello, curious people. Welcome to another community event at Curious. And today we chat about networking. And before, before we uh, kick off anything, I am curious to know why would you guys think that LinkedIn said that 85% of the jobs on LinkedIn are filled through networking? I'm curious to know why would you think that the Society for Human Resources Management said that 77% of employers hire through networks. If somebody has a vacancy, they go and ask in their networks, people they're connected with, if there is somebody interested or if they know somebody interested. 77% hire through networks. I am curious to know, what do you guys think if I told you that Harvard Business Review, which is um, uh, you know, a credible, prestigious kind of um, uh, forum, for people to share content and ideas and stuff, said that people with strong professional networks are more likely to get paid more and to have a higher promotional pace, as in they get promoted faster than other people who do not enjoy um, such a strong network. And last but not least, why do you think that the American Sociological Association said that whenever somebody is enjoying a strong network, they are generally more confident, they have a sense of purpose, and they have a, 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 um, a sense of meaning. Why do you guys think that's the case? Why do you guys think that networking um, has that effect in the professional world? Ahmed, just interrupt me and go ahead, man. Yeah, thank you. Well, from my personal experience, when that occur in some paths mm -hmm. in my career, uh, it feels you like you're empowered and trusted. So people always look for someone they trust. And when you are have a good reputation and trustworthy from a lot of people that you could deliver, achieve, have some integrity about your work and experience, this reflects in a qualitative value about yourself and it makes you, you know, first of all, I'm competent. I did this multiple times. Second, I know people can trust me on that and they keep asking me about that. Third, that makes me feel like, okay, I'm competent. I, I, I should never look like uh, worried about finding a good job for me or a fitting position for me as long as, uh, you know, my integrity and my values and my capabilities all combined always says that I deliver. So when I'm in a right network, that could mm -hmm. introduce me to the right people, to the right opportunities. I always thought like it, it's a privilege because it always puts you a step ahead. So even if I got through so, some sort of interview or something, yeah, yeah, we know that we heard it from someone trustworthy X or Y or Z, you know. So it makes more sense for them because this person either was, either was a, a fellow, uh, you know, a colleague in work, ex-partner with them uh, in, in different company. Maybe they studied together in university. Maybe they uh, they were some sort of you know had had some sort of activity or social activity together. So they know each other in person. So they share some values as well. So when 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 that happened and and you are in the middle of this circle of network, I believe that your potential significantly get higher, and in return you feel surely more confident and more competent, and. The only thing that I might learn from that as well, uh, that it shouldn't not only be the network and the value that you, br you bring to the table. It's all always about what you can teach others and learn from them. This is much important from networking than, you know, he, he can do this favor or this job for us or he's a good in this task. No, no, no. It's more about more than this. When they came back to you, it's not about charging them. It's about you are there for their help with their experience and not asking anything in return because you're charged this relationship between uh, you and the people around you more than the monetary value that could come later on in the right opportunity. And even if you ask it for an opportunity, they always come, come handy, you know, okay, we'll recommend you. Of course, we know you, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like uh, quote unquote, what's up, <laughs> but, uh, or a privilege, but, but they trust you because you're competent, uh, Sorry for taking so much time, but uh, that's it for me. I'm out.
Why are you apologizing, man? This is the whole point of us doing that. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't want yeah. to hijack the moment. Uh, I, I, I didn't that, want to drop. This, this is our event. This, let's keep doing that. So just for me to recap and make sure we, we heard you correctly, Ahmed, what you're saying is the reason why researchers have found that people with stronger network end up being more confident, more established, and have a higher sense of purpose and meaning is that the more they find themselves being the reference to others and the more they hear acknowledgement on their achievements and expertise and um, and knowledge and so on and so forth, they start feeling that they are, have now become what we call a, uh, a thought leader, right? Like this technically, person, yeah, sorry? Yeah, technically right, technically right in their own network. Because exactly. there are multiple networks and layers of networks. That's also something that, that I figured out later. Because mm-hmm. maybe my network is limited to some extent for some something, and the people there are share interest in something that I maxed out there. But if mm-hmm. I'm looking for something different, I should look for a different network to align with as well, join the same values and everything. And maybe two networks can bring up something much bigger than single one. Because people always have this tribal or community yeah. community mindset always, you know, people are social. You're talking about different social circles now, right? Like yes, yes, groups. yes, yes. yes. Different, yes exactly, exactly. Fantastic, fantastic. Which is, mm-hmm. which is coming from the fact, or or from the mindset of having like this investment mindset, right? Like you don't put, like the more you limit yourself in one social circle in one network, the less likely you are to you know spread your wings and be connected to more people and maximize. And maximum limited opportunities, limited people. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, fantastic insight. What about the others, guys? Like, why? Why do you think, for example, that seventy-seven percent of employers hire through networks? Why? Why do you think this happens? You know, allow me if I can just contribute a little while adding to what Ahmed said. Please jump in. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, I think this whole thing will stem from a basic fundamental human insight. The human insight is that if you're sitting in a boardroom of, with people who are sitting around you and everybody wants to interact with everybody and the people who are sitting and not interacting with the other person, resultantly, the entire room will, nobody from the entire room will come and interact with that person because nobody cares that that person is worth familiarizing with. It's a basic human insight. The moment, the moment you are ready to interact with other people, you are always uh, taken, um, taken into their realm, taken into their circle. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a give and take policy where the human insight works very fundamentally in that. So the human value is interaction, human value is social circle, human value is trust, like Ahmed very nicely said. Human value is what, what you can give and take each other when you know each other, have, you know, share different knowledges. And that, that's what being probably is being termed as network in the professional arena. But the nature of human value still is the most important fundamental things. And that's what people respect and that's what people look for. That how, how are you well networked? How are you well, how are you doing well in your social network or your professional network? How are you with other people? That's where trust forms, that's where of respect and uh, you know knowledge is revered, how, how you can interact with in those realms. I think that's that's fundamental. 100%. I'm, I'm hearing very similar thoughts now. I'm hearing that networking is about adding value, not pressing connect button on LinkedIn. And now you say I have a network of, I don't know, 3,000 people, 5,000 people. It's not about that, right? It's about how many of these people are you adding value to, right? True. I agree with that. Wonderful. Wonderful. I have something else to add for uh, our Buddy here who had this conversation. I'm, I have short memory names, guys, so I'm sorry if I misread or misremembered any of you. So apologies for that ahead. So uh, adding up to the last statement, he said, I believe also that your social value uh, in this game of networking always come from what you give and what you receive. It's like an infinite, you know, uh, an infinite cycle. The more you give, the more you receive in favors, in respect, in knowledge, in connections, in leverage maybe, 
because the more you you are giving to others the more you could receive from them or some from somebody else so it's it's not a linear game it's non it's a non-linear game this networking is second you just give for the sake of giving you know because it's a human instinct as we said it's something that we all at some point enjoy when we are comfortable and have some sort of knowledge or strength in some subject matter that we can share support information or connection about it okay and of course it should be aligned with our values once this happened and you are in the center of this network or connections you thrive because i could share information with you mina and you get impressed about it and you start talking good about me and then maybe someone else in this in this group could you know come and and tell me no there's also something else you need to look at because this could improve your point of view about x and y so okay thank you i feel grateful the feedback didn't come from me it comes from someone else of the network itself so i shouldn't expect the return like one-on-one -on -one favors it doesn't work like that it, it works like how generous you are is how connected you are and how valuable social you are it's like a social ranking thing in my mind it, it's it's not about you know status or it's about titles no 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 most of people are the social leaders are much humble to like even titles or even care about it and they are the most leveraged persons and connected persons you could ever imagine you know this is one also lesson i learned that i shouldn't you know look at titles and impress me because most of the time the the people hold titles, not usually the most connected or knowledgeable persons. They limited their knowledge sometimes into something they're really efficient at, but most of the time they are a good connection, but you you sometimes you overvalue how the the they can be, you know, utilize this connection between us and them. And most of the time it's their team or something from someone from their network who was the most active networker there that you can both of you benefit everybody else. So yeah, I, I don't know if my wording was correct, but but I'm just trying here to explain what I've been experiencing for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And back to what you said, yeah, Ahmed, about the, um, like from earlier, about different social um, uh, groups or different social circles. How would you say <laughs> what you shared now and what you shared earlier about having different social circles um it, it's kind of correlated it's kind of related somewhat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well uh for me how i see social circles are in two two different dimensions the first is let's say demographic dimension geographics let's say geographic okay it's easier that way so if i have connections in europe maybe in 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 some sort of industries or some sort of social relations of friends or families as well this is also connection we should not ignore I have access there, and the deeper it goes to my industry expertise, it might be more important, because mm -hmm. maybe it's not a family business, and maybe not everybody in your family have the same, you know, knowledge about about you. Because now we're talking about professional networking, not not social one. So I I could give like eighty percent of my time in geographical connection for people in my industry, and twenty percent only to my family connections, because family connection is something like could help me in some sort of limited things that they could support me because I'm a I'm good, honest, successful person and supportive to my family and I have good integrity, so I worth their support. And mm -hmm. the second level that I, or the second dimension I look at in everywhere is the professional network itself of diversification. Who are the people that I will, they will help me or that, that I might require to learn from them to improve my own skills Okay, in, in my own industry and this different industries. So there's a cross industrial and cross continental maybe uh, networks. These are two types uh, or two domains that I focus on, which they all boil down at the end because every person or few people have some sort of network. So for example, I'm a person coming from the ground of product and innovation. The innovation industry in Europe, completely different in Gulf and completely different than North Africa and completely different than Asia. They have a different scope in many things, granular level, that people who work there can understand it. The practice are same, but the market itself is different. So when I know those people from different places, I understand what the market needs and where I'm aligned, I could fit in. Maybe some people say, okay, you can go to Europe, you work with a, with a, with a European company. 
Okay, but maybe my next step could be make sense more if I go to an Asian company, a Canadian company, be more aligned to my next step. So I focus on my career and at the same time understand the market needs when I go there. So, for example, another example for the professional network for me, this dimension, uh, the HR, how they onboard there, uh, how they recruit people, how is the, the, the legal things work, uh, the payments and everything. Uh, how is the process? What are my rights there? I didn't work there before. So following those people and having some conversation about them and, you know, break the ice with some sort of conversation like, okay, I have this CV and you offer this service uh, to review CVs. Could you review this for me and give me some insights? They do it for free, by the way, in, in LinkedIn. Most of the people who offer these services do it for free. They just open there to help each other. But most of the people don't understand or try even to use these tools. You have someone professional in some industry who can review your CV and give you some good insights that could flip things upside down. Uh, this is one thing. Other thing, uh, the hiring managers in, in, in your industry as well, if they are interested to have some conversation about them and show them how innovative you are and how you get things done and how you are focusing on the right things and how efficient you are. This kind of conversation related to every subject matter expert in every domain makes you have like this kind of connections at some point and also casual talks posts calls meetings something like webinars or anything like gathering or anything and celebrate things with them it mm -hmm. makes easier for you to ask them guys do you have any good opportunity that you can you know you know uh, recommend me for xyz it goes like that. It's like any kind of a relationship. It's like marriage and, and engagement or anything else. It takes time. It takes a curve until we trust each other. But it's ongoing process. So either you are a networker by heart and you keep doing this and not waiting for anything except excellence and bigger network and nothing is specific and you are open for every opportunity. Or if you're fixed in mindset, I think it will be like anxiety for you because you feel like doing a lot of effort and you're not waiting for a return because return in the networking is not quantified easily. It's not quantified. It's 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 a learning curve. So the overlapping between those circles, uh, domains for me makes sense because it gives you a wider uh, spectrum and wider uh, view of you about what where you're going and what what's going on around you. If I understood your question well, if I didn't have a, I'm sorry. No, I get it. I get it. And, and now I have, I've been going through the content because I had to pick a slide from within the content. And that's a question that, that you, you have now raised at the end of your sharing, Ahmed. And, and I thank you again for that. You mentioned that thank whether you. you're doing this by heart or you're not, right? So now yes. there was a of the content that I had to pull. And this question is to everyone. Like this question is directed to everyone except for Ahmed. And the thank question you. is, do you guys do you guys believe that networking is for extroverts and social people only? No, you're not. Whoever told you you're an introvert was lying to you. No, you're no, not. no. I, I, I am introvert. I was trained to do. You're this. not. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're Trust not. me, I know myself. <laughs> no, no. I trained hard to change myself to be flexible more. And you, you, you did change I yourself. You just said it. You did change yourself, right? Yeah, I changed myself. But you by did, default, yeah. I, I, yeah, my default mode is introvert. But when I find myself in a passionate position. I flip to extrovertal uh, mentality a little bit. And that's, that's an how it happened to all of us. Yeah, yeah. If you're passionate and feel you know good in something, and you can add something there, you your passion will make you extrovert. I did. Well, Mina, I have a really uh, a, a little point in this question that you're very much. If I may just uh, add to this, I, I have a feeling that there are two elements to what the question is. There is an element of networking, uh, which is a different context because there is a purpose to that, because the word itself has a purpose in it. It is not no more building relationships. And uh, the other two factors, which is written, is a behavioral pattern. 
One behavioral pattern that one would actually attribute to is the word called extrovert, which is a part and parcel of what a personality would be. And the, uh, the factor of social people, you know, there's the, the three elements in this question. So, so one, like Emma very nicely said that uh, if, if you are an introvert, you can develop to be an extrovert because you have a purpose towards that. And one can be a social person, but may not be a good networking and vice versa. So, you know, it more, it's more probably, I believe, a purpose related, probably I'll talk about myself. So if I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a very social person, but having been uh, in the advertising and marketing business for a very long while, it is, it, is an, it is imperative that I need to have a social skill oriented. It is imperative that I need to be networking with my clients and my team members, et cetera. But then I withdraw for certain uh, space that is required in my professional person. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a uh, yes to this question, which is networking is for people who are extrovert because extroverts are not necessarily uh, part, uh, part of personality only because if the, per if the purpose desires, there has to be a factor of extrovert uh, behavior which needs to come through. Not necessarily that that person needs to share everything in, in, the, in, the, in the perspective of the of profession. But having said what a social person can do, the social behavior will not necessarily lead to networking all the time. Very well said. Social behavior will not lead to networking all the time. That's, That's true. Powerful. That's powerful. What about... Adil, Basil, Basil, Fahad, Fatima, Hafsa, Hassan, Kilin, Muhammad, Rama. What do you guys think? Is networking for introverts and social people only? Hey, everyone. Hello. I'd like to add something. Um, I believe, look, I think that in the past, people um, used to believe that networking, you have to be a social butterfly because, you know, a lot of networking events post-2019 were in person. So a lot of people, sometimes they go like, no, I want to do it and push themselves out of their comfort zone and they want to speak, they want to be heard. However, after COVID, after remote work, I strongly disagree with the sentence because you don't have to be an extrovert. You don't have to leave your room. <laughs> You can network through texts, comments, tagging, writing. You know, we're networking right now without even having our cameras on. So I strongly believe that networking really expanded in its scope and we can make the best out of it and we should. And I think that this is the opportunity for, for a lot of introverts to become extroverts behind the screen. And then when they're ready, you know, they can even do it in person later on. What do you guys think? That's exactly what I did. Um, I would like to add a point. Um, so my point is actually slightly different, um, you can say, and not exactly an answer to the question, but I think, um, you know, regardless of if you're an introvert or an, an extrovert, networking is really, really important if you want to grow in your career, you know, professionally or maybe just in your life itself. Um, so I think it's not really a question of, you know, whether you're uh, an introvert or, or an extrovert. I think you have to network and, you know, obviously network with the right people if you want to go far in your life. Because I think, I mean, uh, this is this is something that I've already been discussed, but I, I personally think as well that net, networking can take you far in life uh, as compared to you doing just a solo ride and, you know, just being your own um, all the time. Fahad, if may I ask if you, who's talking? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm sorry. Go on. Who wants to say what? Okay. I think you can ask. My question is, along the same lines, is networking for for uh, what did we say? Is networking for introvert for extroverts and social people only? Right. My. Um, a follow-up question to that along the same lines is, is success for smart and intelligent people only? Can we say that? It depends what success uh, is for yourself, right? So like what do you define as success? Um, so you cannot, you, maybe you're not very intelligent, very smart, you know, not everybody's Elon Musk type, you know, but they're still maybe successful and satisfied in their life. So 
I mean, I think it's uh, it's very variable and depending on the person. So the question, the answer here is yes or no. Is success for smart and intelligent people only? Yes or no? No. Can I hear from the rest? You guys agree? So no. Yeah, it's a no. Rama says no. Hafsa in the chat says no. Yeah, no. No. Okay, very good. Yeah, no, it's I don't think so. Man, um, yeah, is is wealth for hardworking people only? No, we've seen a lot of super hardworking people, but they're still not wealthy. And the other way around, someone who's just good at I don't know, Bitcoin or crypto and stuff like that, and they're just super rich overnight, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kelina is like super no in the chat. Fatima is like no, very good. So it's it's not a rule, right? Is leadership for dominant people only? Are are all successful leaders dominant personalities? I think it's important that you're like you have that in your personality, you know, like where you're assertive and because you cannot be a leader if you're not assertive, like how can you lead a pack of, let's say, maybe just five, 10 individuals if you cannot uh, give them a direction and, you know, be a little assertive and when, when the situation demands it. Mm -hmm. can, can we read the question again? Is leadership for dominant people only? Because what you said now, Fahad, is uh, you need assertiveness to be a leader. And I agree. But does that mean that only dominant people can be leaders? If someone is not dominant by nature, they cannot be leaders? They can be, but I mean, that would be a different style of leadership then, I guess. It would be more collaborative kind of a leader as compared to someone who's more, you know, someone who's just giving directions. But they are leaders, right? They have different yep. styles, but they are leaders. All yep, right. Definitely. So is networking for extroverts and social people only? No, it's a skill. It's a skill and a mindset. You learn that, right? Just like you learn how to be successful, just so you learn how to, you know, um, um, I don't know, increase your wealth, become richer somehow, just like you learn leadership. It's called leadership skills. Some people are born leaders. We agree. But leadership is a skill to learn. You can become a better leader, right? Same thing like networking. Some people are networkers by nature. There is a personality that empowers people to network just by nature. But networking is a skill that you learn how to do. It doesn't have anything to do with your personality, and it shouldn't be limited by your personality. And what I am talking about here is there is a limiting belief with some people that I am not social. Networking is not for me. Networking is, is a mindset and networking is a skill, right? So we are, um, Hassan says, I agree with you, but Hassan is chatting with me uh, directly. Hassan, could you chat with everybody? Uh, and Muhammad says, dominant in uncertain times is important. Of course, you need that type of leadership where you go like, let's, we're going to do this and this and this and that 100%. So let's let's uh, regroup a little bit because we don't want to be all over the place and we are all over the place at the moment so just to regroup what is it that we want to take out of this session by the end of the coming 90 minutes or so by the end of the 90 minutes we will learn how to network effectively by covering what is networking who do you need to network with and how are you going to do this and the how is where we're going to spend most of the time all right so the definition of networking in the professional space is your ability to build and maintain relationships with people. And, uh, intro introducing yourself to people and making yourself visible and making um, a noticeable presence of somehow, like those people who are interacting now in the session, everybody else is going to remember that they spoke, right? But by tomorrow morning, if you ask anyone who was speaking yesterday, they will forget. That's not networking. This is how you start networking. You build your relationship. You build your presence. That's good. But the art of networking is about the second half of the sentence, which is 
how to maintain this relationship. This is the art. That's the skill. You get introduced to so many people, whether you get introduced or you introduce yourself to so many people, but what are you going to do next? How are you going to stay connected to that person for as long as possible? So you're always top of mind. That's the power of networking. The power of network, everything that you guys said in the beginning, I love the sharing in the beginning. And, and the sharing was along the lines that if you network, you maximize your capacity to make an impact. You maximize the opportunities ahead of you. Uh, you become more powerful. You have more confidence. All of these things, right? This is the this is the essence of networking, right? So if I ask you, for example, now, is networking a long-term investment or a short-term transaction? After what I just said, what would you guys say? It's one choice of those? One. Pick one. Long-term for me. It's a long-term. Hold on, the chat is exploding at the moment. Fahad says, A, hey, so long-term. Muhammad says long-term. Isuru says long-term. Basil says long-term. Rama says S. What's S? How is it titled? I say long right? term. Yeah, you, you meant A because they're both of them. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I should be talking, percent. not typing. <laughs> uh, Hafsa says A. And then Isuru says, always worked for me in the long term. Kaleen says long term. Hassan says long term. Fatima says long term. Nada says long term. Namarak says long term. Namarak, how are you? It's good to see you again here. And I agree with you guys. It's a long-term game. You meet somebody, you shake hands, introduce yourself, you have your elevator pitch or you have your motto, right? This is what I do. This is what I work. This is, you know, what I want to do in the future. This is the value I provide to the world, to life. This is the problem I wake up in the morning to solve. And you don't disappear. That's not networking. That's getting to know people. That's, you know, I don't know, starting a connection. But that's not net networking is the art of maintaining that relationship, right? So if we say that networking is about maintaining that relationship, then networking aims to do what? Well, for me, it's a building trust. So it could work all of us, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Ahmad. It, it, it could work for all. Of, yeah, it could work for all above, by the way. But I, I, I don't like impress. Aims to the question is networking aims to the, yeah, the it, it, purpose it, of networking is. It could be all above, in, instead of impress for me. I, I'm not doing this for impressing anyone. So, maybe you, do you want to say build trust, or you want to say all the above? Pick one. If if I should all above, I go. And, and including impress, I will choose build trust only. This is the key pillar for me. Pick one. Build, build trust, trust or all the above? No, no, build build trust. Build trust. Ahmed goes with build trust. And then uh, Rama goes, what's F? Hold on for a second. F is all the above. So all the above. Hassan, all the above. Namarak says, by networking, you influence others by communication style. So Namarak, are you, are you focusing on E or what's happening here? And then Muhammad says, according to the type of personality, if talking about impress, hmm, we're talking about networking, not about personality. We're talking about networking itself as a definition. What is it aiming to do? If you have a networking mindset, if you have a network mindset, then you are networking with the intention to do what? Lean says all of the above. Basil says it starts with trust. Nada says all of the above. Namarak is is um acknowledging e again and muhammad says all of the above well i would well. actually want to add one word to that i mean if yes. i so, uh, build trust definitely but like i said initially that it's about human interaction so i would actually uh, use the word relationship with trust to so build trust and relationship because that's interlinked if i know you for exactly once and then twice and thrice then you first build a certain relationship which leads to trust you just don't come into trust in immediately so you exactly. build a relationship yeah. which leads to trust therefore you re reflect on that person's interaction and therefore you uh you know impress sell persuade influence and then recommend the person to another 
Which, which we have established, that. we were talking about the definition of networking in the beginning, right? Before this slide, we said it's about building and maintaining relationships. You're right 100%. And, yeah. and I want to establish something with everybody here. Are you guys with me? Because that's, that's going to be fun. When the next slide comes with the right answer, that's going to be fun. For everybody who said all of the above, you're distracting yourself. Why? Exactly. Because all you need to do is make sure that people trust your experience. You're networking with the intention of, I want to be respected in the professional space. Let me, let me stop the share for a second. I want to highlight or emphasize the definition or what I mean by respected in politics, in politics the um, definition of a respected country means that this country is being looked up to as someone who can provide for other countries. So it is self-sufficient. It has more than it needs of the basic resources or life kind of um, uh, necessities. So uh, but usually it's rice, it's water, it's uh, corn, it's, uh, you know, like a few things. That they call the strategic um, uh, supplies. It has enough of its strategic supplies that it, it can start exporting to other countries. That's the definition of a respected country. So what you want to be known as in the world, the professional world, that you are a respected professional. Are you guys with me? This is extremely important because this is taking us somewhere. The I'm so much with you. I'm so much with you that I'm waiting you to finish because I want to give a personal example that will touch everybody. But I want to hear you out. We're looking forward to it too. I'll finish and then you have the floor. Sure. The, the, the thing about networking is you presenting yourself as someone who is a respected professional in that space. If you network because you send an email saying, hello, my name is Mina Wasfi and I'm looking for an opportunity, that's not networking. Sales pitch. Like what we were saying in the beginning, it's about adding value. What value did you add now? You're asking. What is it for me? <laughs> What's it for me? Why would I want to network with you? Now you want to take my network. Well, why would I give it to you? But if we are networking and we have the relationship and... It is maintained. And then at some point, I'm looking for a new challenge. I'm looking for a new opportunity. And then I just put it on LinkedIn. Guys, I'm looking for a new challenge. People start shouting out for me. People start supporting me. People start sharing the link and say, hey, I've worked with Mina and he, you know, he's fantastic. And I would recommend him, uh, his profile, blah, blah, blah. But networking, let's go back to the, um, to the slide. If you want to network, just to impress, guys, look how cool I am. Well, what value did you add? If you want to persuade somebody with something, you, you make them feel that you're trying to sell something, right? You have an idea or you want to sell them or you want to influence them in any way. That's not net networking. That's something else. That's called influencing. And I'm not saying it's bad, but it's different. That's not networking. That could fall under personal brand. It could fall under uh, leveraging your network or monetizing your network or whatever we want to call it. But then this is not networking in itself. We need to establish that before we move forward because everything we're going to talk about for the coming hour or so is about how you can build trust. And May therefore, something? the network is going to start giving back to you. It's, a, it's an investment, remember? So you put a little bit mm -hmm. of effort in the beginning and then you start harvesting the effort that you've put. But it's about mainly when you meet somebody, so Ahmed and I are meeting today, it's about Ahmed making Mina trust him and about Mina making sure that Ahmed trusts him. If we Correct. leave trusting each other, respecting each other, everyone sees that the other person has something to give not wanting something from them, has something to give and is keen to give and wants to share, that's a healthy network. Now we're building a, a professional relationship that we could call networking. Is, is, the, is the definition 
and the essence of networking clear. Let me stop the share before we listen to Ahmed. Let me stop the share for a second. I want to make sure that we understand what networking is all about. Networking is not about how many people do I have, like, or how many people have seen my post. That's not networking. It's about how many people trust me as a respected person in my domain. If I have you guys say anything in the chat, unmute, say you agree, you disagree, you want to add something. Namarak says makes so much sense now. So the now is like giving me that there is something clicked, which is awesome. As we wait for, for more reactions, Ahmed, what do you want to share with us? Yep. A question for everyone. Okay. This will be a touching. Better than if someone you care for or yourself have some illness. Who or which physician or according to which criteria you choose the physician you go to? This is an important question about... about before, you, before you continue with the details of the story, would you like me to pause the recording? Uh, as you wish. It's nothing personal there, but, but it's, it's something we touch the people right. in their mind. It, it, will, it will invoke the empathy there and the logic at the same time. Something we'll learn from the, the product interviews. So let me share this with you. Which kind of doctor or under what criteria you choose the doctor or the physician when mm -hmm. someone you care for have some illness? Do you choose him because they are famous or do you choose them because they are competent? What you choose? Write up your answers because this is will be the definition how you see networking. And now we will see is this definition aligned with the truth or not? Be honest. I'll be mute and then I'll leave it to Mina. He got my point, I think, I'm sure. Question for everybody, right? Yeah, the question for everybody, but I'll let you uh, lead the conversation and the answer of this question because I'm sure it clicked with you as well. <laughs> um, Muhammad would like you to repeat. Okay, guys and girls. So if someone you care for from your family or if it yourself filled illness okay you you had some sort of health issue and you need to choose a physician or a doctor to visit which criteria you choose upon a famous physician or doctor to visit to check on you or a trusted first doctor or physician who are who is expert in this domain and you know their track record very well and you trust their judgment and their investigation about uh, you know diagnosing your case and treat you which you choose, a famous person or a competent person, that expert? It's always urgent. It's a life or death matter. So what do you choose? A competent one. Okay, three competent. Who else? Participate, please, everybody. Do you choose a competent person or a famous person? It's really important. Anybody else have any answers? I'm at a point of view we are getting here. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it would work very nicely in, in, in other profession, but as far as uh, the medical profession goes, uh, it, it, there will be a little bit of a dilemma, a dilemma about the criticality of what actually goes in. So there will be some times that one would actually have to rely on sure surety of uh, the, the doctor's uh, popularity and how famous it is, not just because he's been written about, but how, how that person has uh, you know, graduated to a certain ladder of uh, completion of his task that has been there. Having said exactly. that, if, there is a, if, if the criticality of the illness is, uh, is doable, then you don't want to spend too much time and effort and money going forward. You rely on reference. You rely on the, the competence and the recommendations of people who are better networked. Although exactly. I know where your, where your example is going, I completely agree with it. But I think from the example okay. point of view, there is a factor of mm -hmm. criticality which will define which way will you take the decision. Good point. Good point. Good point. I agree with you. And that's exactly why I asked this question. 
because these kind of qualities, okay, that's good, no more answers. These kind of qualities, what are you looking for in your network? And I think this is what Mina was referring to. And now I leave the mic for him to continue. Thanks for participation. Thank you. And Hafsa, about, about no more answers, I think you were you were referring to Hafsa's um, a, a contribution because Hafsa says no more answers. Think rest will do the home remedy. <laughs> Mansour says I'm a pharmacist, and most effective point to me is trust. Is trust. So what what? Let's recap quickly before before we move forward. We have established the following. I'm putting it on the on the screen again in a second, that networking is not about the personality and it's not about how many people are you connected with, but networking is a business mindset. It's about you making sure that you have the right reputation in the professional space. That's networking. That as many people as possible know you and know what you want them to know about you in a way that it establishing you as a trusted figure in your space. If you're a pharmacist, then everybody knows that you're a pharmacist who has something to say, who has experience, who is talented, who is curious, who is interested, energetic, passionate about the space, all of these things. The whole thing, and I don't know, Namarak, I know you were there for a few sessions. Hassan, I saw you uh, um, participating with us in a few sessions. Fatima, you were there as well. Hafsa, um, who else? Uh, Ituru, of course. Hey, how are you? Uh, Kileen as well. Um, so yeah, like a few people have been attending the other sessions. If you guys have missed them, the recordings are there in the website. And, and we were talking all the way about you being an organization. You're not an individual. You're not a job seeker, you know? You're not a job seeker. You are an organization. You are an organization who has an offering. You are an organization who has capabilities. You are an organization that has resources. You are an organization that has a price. And this price is compared to what the market has to provide. You are an organization who has a portfolio, a digital presence. Could be a website, could be multiple, right? But people can find you. You are an organization that has its own marketing strategy and positioning strategy. You have your own brand and you are an organization that has its own PR as in public relations. That's networking. That's your networking arm here. That's your PR arm as an organization. That you're doing things for good. You're doing things pro bono. You're not waiting for money. It's about your reputation, how people see you, what comes to people's mind when they think of you in terms of attitude, in terms of behavior, in terms of confidence, in terms of personality, right? So to sum up and go to the other interesting question about who should you network with? And then we're going to go to the how. That's the what is networking. Now, who should you network with? I'm going to put a few categories on the screen right now. I need everybody to pause, think, because then I'm going to ask you a very specific question. All right. So if you want to say, I have a healthy network, I have a diverse network, it means that in your domain, you're well networked with the following. Peers, as in people who have more or less same level of experience, same level or depth of establishment in the space where you're in. So you would consider them peers. And it's not about age. It's not about age. You could be 19 years old. Someone else is like 45, but they're new to the space. So the 45 years old person would perceive this 19 years old person as a peer because they are still learning the same thing. They stand in the same space in terms of, in terms of development. Mentors. Who are you learning from? They need a few people to be much more experienced than you. And again, it's not about the age. It's about how much experience. And by the word, experience is not years again. You could have 15 years of experience. Somebody else has five years of experience. The five years of experience is much more experienced than you are. Because it's not about the length of the experience. It's about the depth of it, right? It's about how many, how many times did you fail? 
How many projects did you participate to? How many topics have you explored? How many skills have you mastered? How fast are you learning and growing in your domain? How, how many achievements have you achieved, right? How what did you build? All of these things make you a mentor at some point where people come to you and say, we want to learn from you. And with the same mindset, you would look at people who have achieved more than you, who are a few years ahead of you. And again, years is not the timeline. It's the experience that a few years ahead of you and you would want to learn with them. So they are your reference when you have a business problem or you feel stuck at some point in your professional career, you go to them and you say, hey, listen, this is where I am. What should I do next? And then they help you think. You need to network with sponsors. Who are sponsors? Sponsors could be people internally in your organizations or outside of your organization, people you've worked with before, for example. And sponsors are people who are established as in their network. So they are public figures. By public, I don't mean they're famous, but I mean they have a wide fan base and they have the trust and they have the authority, authority in the positive sense of the word, and then as in they are trusted and they are heard, and they have influence in the space, and they are able to push you forward, to vouch for you. This is what this these are the people you go to for reference letters, for example, when you're about to explore a new role somewhere in an organization or something, and then you need some reference letters, you go to your sponsors. You go to a CEO you worked with before, you go to um, a founder you worked with before, you go to, you know, someone who is senior than you, more superior, they're more established in the space, but it's not about their experience in the domain that you seek help. It's about their power and authority in their space to push you, to encourage you, you know, to push you through a challenge or towards an opportunity to recommend you. So you need to be well networked with sponsors you need to be well networked with clients by clients here i mean those people who benefit directly from your experience those the monetized channels the revenue streams so what i do for example beside curious every evening i do coaching for example so those people i coach these are my clients who are your clients whatever you do you need to have clients you're a product person, you're an engineer, you're this, you're this. That's that's the network you have. That people know top of mind that they can come to you if they need help to solve a specific problem, technically speaking, that you have the experience. Potentially, clients could be employers, right? At some point, people who want to service from your uh, uh, capabilities. You're an organization, so it could be an employer. And last but not least, experts in the space. And here, it's not only about you necessarily networking as in connecting with the person personally, but for example, I have a few published authors and university professors and stuff like that. I have never seen them. They don't have the faintest idea who I am. But I follow their blogs. I follow their LinkedIn posts. I follow their um, um, published, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, um, published material and all these things and I share with them and I ask them questions and you know I challenge them sometimes and they come back to me we have never seen each other it's all happening through email so I take a screenshot or I take a picture of, of, of a page or I scan a page of a book and then I send them and I go like this part I'm not the man. I give them context I'm working on this research blah 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 and I'm taking your book as a reference for example and I need to understand what did you mean by this and then they send me, they send me their resources, they send me their opinion, they send me feedback. So you're connected with experts, you're networked with experts. Now, seeing this, seeing this, these groups of people with the explanations I mentioned, how would you rate your own network? There is a network meter. I need you guys to please go to a browser. It works on phone, on laptop, on whatever. Just go to your browser. Go to menti.com, use the code you see here, the 22929439. When you go to menti.com, it will ask you for a code, put that code, and then you will find these um, uh, six categories, or five of them. And then I need you to please score, give it a score. How much out of 10 would you say 
you are happy with each of these categories. Status quo, where you stand right now. And it's anonymous, we don't get to see names, all right? And I'm gonna put it on the screen, only the results because we do not get to see names. I'm just gonna put it on the screen right there because I need to share this with everybody, awesome. So here, uh, uh, here you see there is one person. We are fifteen people, excluding myself. So we're sixteen, pe uh, fifteen people in the um, in the meeting here. So this number needs to be fifteen before we move on. The instructions are up there. You go to menti.com, use the code, and tell us how would you rate your network so far. It's coming in. The recode code is here. And if you guys want the link, it's here. Seven people. Winnie, how are you? It's so good to see you again. We are here. I am well, thank you. Please let me share the link again. If you go to the link I'm sharing in the chat now, you will be able to tell us anonymously, we will not know that that's your scores. Uh, you will be able to share how strong do you find your network in these different categories? How would you say, how, like how strong is your network with your peers? How strong is your network with your mentors? How strong is your network with your experts or the experts in, in your domain, you know? So now we're looking for this 12, the number 12 here to be 16. You guys see this? So we have four people to go. Let's give it one more minute. There we go, we have one more contribution. We see the average in the room so far is 5.3. Hmm? Do you guys see this? Now it's 5.2 as we reach 14 people participating out of the 16 who should. So now we have 5.2 as an average. Hmm. There's a lot of work to happen here, right? There is some work to happen here. What we're gonna do for the next hour is make sure that we know exactly how to get this 5.2 to a 10. That's what we're gonna do for the next hour. But if you've been with me here since the very beginning, let's stand up. I'm gonna stand up too. Everybody stands up. Let's refresh for a second. Take a quick uh, one minute stretch break before, before we move forward. Up and stretching, good. Good, good, good. Guys, join Rama and myself. Up and stretch, stretch, stretch. Uh, before your um, back gets sore and the neck and everything. How do you get the 5.2 to 10? If you're interested to know the answer to that question with practical action plan, 
say, I'm curious. Unmute or say in the chat, say, I'm curious. And then I will tell you. And as yes. I'm happy to hear. Hmm. Hafsa is curious, Hassan is curious, Hamad is curious, Nada is curious, Namarak is curious, Fatima is curious, Basil is curious. Cool, 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 cool. Fantastic. And hmm. Looking at this before we leave it, it looks like sponsors have the lowest scores. Peers and clients are relatively the highest. And then here we have sponsors are the lowest. Hmm. So it looks like we don't have really good relationship with the management teams or with our managers um, after we leave. Hmm. Interesting, interesting insight. Very good, very, very good. Um, let's start digging deep into what is it that you can do in order to get this 5.2 all the way to, um, to 10. I want to tell you a story first. Would you say that networking requires empathy or curiosity or generosity or all of the above? What would you say, given everything we mentioned about networking being the ability to build and maintain relationships and us saying it's about a business mindset and it's about you building trust and all, what do you think is it's about here? Hmm. So Rama says all of the above. Isuru says all of the above. You have to first give something to get something. Hassan says generosity. Namarak says empathy and curiosity. Hafsa says A and B. Hafsa A and B is not an option. It's either A or B, or you have to take C and say all of the above, which is D. Isuru says, and you have to be understanding of them and curious listener. When he says generosity, for you, for you to network effectively, I know, I know. Now Muhammad is like empathy, Hafsa says curiosity, because it's actually it's all of them. Do you guys know who this is? Tell me one thing about this lady if you know who she is. She died in a horrible accident. She died in a horrible accident. Nada says charismatic. Yes. There are books, books written about Princess Diana's charisma. Books only studying how charismatic she was. And the sentence you see on the screen right now, Princess Diana only spoke to me tonight, is something that um, one of the diplomats said to one of the reporters covering a massive event that was happening in Packingham Palace one day. So Packingham Palace is the, um, like the, the, the big, royal palace where the royal family in England stays in London, where the queen stays and, and, and everybody else in the royal family. And uh, th there was a big, big, big party that uh, was attended by around 1000 people. Everybody's there, sitting there in the um, like a huge, a huge ballroom. And ta-da, Princess Diana's coming down the stairs in a beautiful dress. And she spends around two hours in the ballroom before she leaves. That's not the story. The story is when she was leaving, she left an impression with everybody in the ballroom that she only spoke with them. That was everybody's feedback afterwards. 
Could somebody help me with the math, please? If you have two hours to spend in a room that has 1,000 people, how much time do you have with each person? Could you guys help me with math? Mm. Hamad Mansour says 0 0.12. 0 0.12 minutes, you mean? 0 0.12 what? Rama says just a few seconds. Hafsa says 13 seconds. Mansour says 12 seconds. Hassan says 12 seconds. It's actually, really, Muxul Kushi has about 16 seconds, just, just about 16 seconds to work on it. 16 seconds per person. How do you spend six, 12, 16 seconds with one person when they know you've been around for like two hours and they leave saying, he only spoke to me, she only spoke to me. How do you do that? That's networking right there. That's networking to the roof. How was she able to do that? I am going to tell you how she did that. But I was just smiling to them. She was actually talking to them. Smiling is important. We're going to get to smiling. But I want to share with you a piece that you might find interesting. That's you. And what I need you guys to do now is grab a pen and a paper and or, or your phone or your laptop, whatever you use to take notes, and just type in five different topics you're thinking about right now, anything you're thinking about right now. The weather, your kids, uh, work, I'm hungry, what's for lunch, where would this guy finish? It's an interesting session. I regret wasting my time doing this, whatever it is. But whatever it is that's happening in your mind right now, at least five, six topics, just sketch them down. Just let me know when you're done. Muhammad is just shared. Thank you for sharing, Muhammad. Food, a movie, hanging out, sleeping. Thank you for sharing. So now Muhammad is thinking about stuff. And then when you guys are done thinking about stuff, I need you to start categorizing everything you thought about, which are things concerning you. By con concern has a negative connotation for some reason. People think that the word concern uh, is, is like I am worried about something. Concern means that my attention is drawn towards something, right? So we will imagine that everything you, you have thought about at the moment, it falls in the circle of concern. It's things you're giving attention to. You guys with me? So there are things that are going in my mind. These are things that concern me, right? Hassan, thank you for sharing. Hassan says dinner, office, sleeping, weekend plans. Very good. Very good. Things I'm thinking about. Hafsa sharing food, shopping, movie, salon, work. Thank you very much for sharing. Very good. Very good. These are things that are concerning us. Now, some of these things we can control and some of them we cannot control. So inside the bigger circle of concern, there is something called the circle of influence. So a circle in a circle. The smaller circle, the circle of influence, will have things that you're concerned about, that you're thinking about, but you do have control over. And the things that are concerning you, that you're paying attention to, but you can't control, are just floating in the circle of concern. So for example, if you go like, I'm thinking about how the weather would be tomorrow. Well, 
Now you have two things. Part of this problem you have control over, the other part you don't have. You have control on what you're going to wear or where you're going to go. That's a decision. But you cannot control the weather. So the weather would go in the circle of concern. But what you're going to wear tomorrow or where you're going to go tomorrow, like your plans or whatever, depending on how the weather looks like, that's in the circle of influence. Now this is how Princess Diana used to do it. May her soul rest in peace. What Princess Diana used to do is to understand that just like she has circles of concern and influence, others do. And the whole game behind you being a charismatic person is your ability to consider others' circle of concern and influence specifically in your own circle of concern. So it's as if you are stepping into their space instead of dragging them to your own space when you're talking to them. I'll give you a perfect example. You're walking in the street. Say, Rama and I are walking in the street, right? We meet each other. The first thing I tell Rama, Rama, how are you? I missed you very much. My back hurts and see what they did to me at work. And I am very hungry, by the way. And what is this weather? You know what? I hate the uh, uh, Dubai weather. And, and this and this and this and that. And then Rama's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Mm. How about, what, what is she getting out of this? There's nothing in it for her. But imagine if the other way around. Rama and Mina are walking. They meet each other. And Rama goes like, Mina, how are you? Very nice shirt, by the way. How did you do at work? I heard there's uh, you were considering another position. How did this go? What is she doing now? She's talking to me about, about me, not about her. So she's talking to me about things that I care about. She has just stepped outside of her circle of concern to come to mine. And now when she leaves, I feel that I vented out. I have spoken. So when I see her again, I go like, Rama, I need to tell you something. This is called charisma. What Princess Diana had done that night is every single person she saw she told them something very personal about them that made them feel that, oh, she sees me. Nice hair, great dress. I don't know what, I don't know who, I don't know where. Oh, man. Where are you kids? I thought you're bringing them, you know? About people. She was talking all the time about them. She didn't mention anything about her. She's not interested in sharing something. It's not about her sharing her mind. It's about asking people to share what's in their mind. If you want to network effectively, do it in a charismatic manner. Now, what does that mean? It means that you go to people to add value to something they need. You're giving them something that they're looking for. You're not asking to take something. Remember the um, example we mentioned earlier about the, uh, the email you would send asking if there are opportunities, blah, blah, blah. It's the same. It's the same idea. What's the person receiving the email is not finding you a charismatic person at the moment. So the first thing you need to um, uh, consider, if you want to network, if we want to network with effectiveness and like professionalism, is to make sure we are empathetic. We are curious and we're generous. And the whole networking experience between two people, if I'm part of that, of that equation, then I need to make sure that the networking process is not about me. It's about them. That's how you're empathetic and that's, that's how you're curious. But then you would ask me, how are you, how are you generous? I, I want to tell you a story. It's about my father. Um, my father has a, a, a really healthy network of professionals. And he's now, I think, 45, 50 years 
of experience, something like for, um, 45 years or something of professional experience. And when I was a little kid, I was like six, seven years old. And my dad was sat at the dining uh, table. We had, we had a big dining table and he was sat and there was a lot of boxes and a lot of gift uh, wrapping paper and a lot of um, what do you call this tape and a, uh, a pair of scissors. And I, I was like, but dad, who are you playing Santa Claus to? Because this is not Christmas. And he was like, nah, Habibi, it's not for uh, Christmas. And I was like, what is it for? And he said, well, there are birthdays this month. And I said, whose birthdays? It's not my birthday. It's not my mom's birthday. It's not your mom, my sister's birthday. Who's this for? And he said, this is for people I know who have birthdays this month. And I was like, but why would you care? Are you getting all these people gifts? That's like our money. Why, why are you getting presents for other people? Get me the toy I wanted the other day. And then you keep saying, uh, you got have too many toys. I don't want to spend much more money. And then you go and bring other people gifts. What is this? What he was trying to teach, when I was too young, now that I remember, I laugh, but I was too young. My dad every month had a budget that he called the presence budget. It's a budget. It's a budget that he takes out of his salary to make sure that whoever has a birthday, whoever gave birth to a kid, whoever has celebrating a work anniversary, all these things has received a gift from Ahmed Wasfi. That's my father's name. The, the gift arrives at home with a few flowers and a card and, you know, uh, just I remember that this is your work anniversary or I heard you had a new kid or I heard you got promoted at work for absolutely no reason. My father at the same time is the guy in the family where everybody goes to when they need something. Because he's the guy who knows somebody who knows somebody who can get things done. You see what I mean? And I will never ever forget my dad at 11.30, I think, or 11 at night, sitting, leaning on the dining table, insisting to finish. I was a kid, so the number I will say probably is, is many more than like the reality, because when I was a kid, everything looks bigger. But I, to me, then it looked like, I don't know, 20, 30 boxes. The, the dining table was full of boxes. Not big, but like small boxes, you know, the one that gift boxes ones. And I don't remember what he was wrapping, maybe notebooks, maybe pens, maybe photo frames, like probably something symbolic, right? Like not something super expensive. So what I wanted to say is you want to network. Lesson number one, be empathetic, be curious, and be generous. People appreciate that. And thank you for the comments in the chat, by the way. You guys are very nice. I have a question for you guys. If we want to reach that mindset, what should we let go of? Let's think as a team now. Let's think as a community. Individually speaking, what would you guys say individually we need to let go of in order to become more empathetic, more curious, and more generous so eventually we become more effective networkers? What should we let go of? Siro. Basil says ego. Namarak says ego. And how others view us. Ah, so the fear of social proof. Very good. Hafsa says pride. Hassan says ego. I'm hearing a lot of ego. So it becomes about the other person. It becomes an act of love. It becomes an act of caring, right? About the other person without doing too much that you regret, like doing it wisely. You give people from the excess that you have, right? So if you have an excess of something, you give it to others. They appreciate it, they remember it. And now there are favors. This is how you maintain the relationship. It comes and goes all the time. Isuru says fear of rejection, that's social proof again. It has to do with ego, right? Because you don't want to look bad, or you don't want to be called a failure, or you don't want to be rejected. That's ego. Put for thought. Let's reflect on this. Let's let's move on with um, yes, man. Have you guys seen the uh, movie? 
Have you guys seen the movie? Yes, man. Muhammad, if you're thinking about a, a movie, that's a that's a good movie. It's a funny one, but it's also a, a good movie. A good in the sense of it makes you think. Yes, man is about a guy who was saying no to everything. So his friends call him, let's go out. No. Uh, would you want to go to this event? No. Do you like to uh, buy a gift for somebody? No. Uh, do you want to take care of I don't know what? No. There is a new project at work or there's a promotion. Would you like to take it? No. Everything is like, no, 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 no. And then something happens. That's the movie. Something happens. And then he starts saying yes to everything. And his life completely changes. Completely changes. Because he started saying yes to everything. Would you want to come out with us? Yes. Would you like the promotion? Yes. Would you like to uh, start uh, uh, playing that sport or start, the, there's a, a hobby, like, um, for example, a book club. Would you like to be part of it? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Instead of the no's, he replaced it with yes. And his life completely changed. The first thing that we learned is to be empathetic and curious and generous. And the th second thing we need to be very mindful of is to be more open to new experiences. And to say yes, because the more you say yes, the more you meet people. And this is where you start building the relationships. And the more you say yes, the more likely you are to take part, to build something, right? To progress your career, to take it forward. Muhammad says, but you would not get everything by saying yes. Well, of course, like I'm not, I'm not talking like radical, like the extreme, like in a sensible manner, right? Like in a way that you don't regret, in a way that you don't break your own ethical code or defy your own beliefs, 100%. But the point being, when you are more proactive, when you are more open to opportunities, when you have less of your guards up, when you've let go of your ego, like we, we reflected all together previously, and you're more open to share on LinkedIn, to vouch for a colleague, to support someone who's not looking so good, but you would make a stand and stand beside them and defend them for some reason, right? You defend your network. For you to go and jump into a conference to meet new people, and then they ask you to come as a guest speaker. So you say, yes. by the way, this story is true. It happened with me in November. When I joined Curious in June, I was like, all right, that's... Um, that's um, uh, EdTech, right? And I come from a talent development background, like learning and development and, and talent management and all of these things, leadership development and all. EdTech is a little bit different. So I want to know more about EdTech. So what do I do? So I was looking around. I found there is this conference called World Forum, EdTech World Forum 2022 in November in London. And they have it every year. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go attend to you know meet people and network and everything. And I bought a ticket. Um, a week later, I received an email from the organizers of the event. They go like, hey, well, we looked at our profile and would you like to have a keynote? And I was like, yeah, I know nothing about EdTech yet, but I can give a keynote. Yeah, let's, let me see what I can talk about. So I prepared a, a, like a few words and then a couple of slides. And then I went up on the podium and then I said whatever I said. And then at the end of the conference, it was a two days conference. Uh, so it was like, I don't know, 20, 25 people who spoke that uh, that conference. By the end, they run a um, like a poll, satisfaction poll. I took second place, like second best voted for keynote among the 20, 25. And I left like a thought leader and I've been in the space for a few months. It's... You say yes, good things happen. You see what I mean? So I just want to... Um, I just want to encourage everyone to be open to opportunities because you meet a lot of people. What happened once they scheduled me as a keynote, even before I arrived to the conference, people started sending me emails and booking me for like, uh, let's have lunch together. You know, this is a 15 minutes coffee break. And then so people are just like, you know, making sure that they network, network properly and all. And some of these relationships I still have until now. And the job offers come and everything come, right? It's, it's good. It's good to network and it's good to put yourself out there. You let your ego down and you go out there. Now, my question to you is, and this is something that we discussed in the personal brand workshop. You need to make sure, this is the third thing, 
you need to make sure to design a proper personal brand elevator pitch. When somebody meets you, how do you introduce yourself? How do you position yourself as someone who's adding value, not taking? As someone who's empathetic, someone who is curious, someone who's generous? That's my elevator pitch. What you see in, in black, that's my own elevator pitch. So you need to design yours. I'm not going to spend too much time on this point because we spoke about it a lot in the personal brand workshop. You guys could go check the recording there. We we had, um, if, if anybody here attended the personal brand workshop, could you guys please also vouch for that? Because we covered through uh, how to put the pitch uh, steps. There were um, uh, eight steps we went through how to do your elevator pitch. And then everybody was sharing their pitch and then we were giving each other feedback. It was really, really like a really good exercise. So if if you did not do this exercise before in your career, I advise you to do it. It's very, very important. Now, the fourth, the fourth step is to prepare a rapport builder. Now, what does that mean? Remember the story I told you about the gifts, wrapping the gifts on the dining table? You need to have your own strategy that does not defy your personality. So if your personality about, for example, if I want to show care to somebody, I spend quality time with them, then this is what you need to do. Just pick up the call, you know, and, and call people. Uh, Muhammad, yes, this session is recorded. Uh, and the recording will be shared right after the session. So you need to have your own tools. You need to have your own habits, your own practices to make sure that you are that you are building rapport with people. And then you need to set your networking goals. Remember these um, uh, different network circles, I'm gonna call them th this way, or target groups that you need to network. So now what you need to do is set a goal, right? So you have something that looks like this, an action plan where you set smart goals. So you say, for example, the category is mentors, who am I going to network with? It's this person. And how I'm going to reach this person? I'm going to reach this person this way. And that's the message I'm going to deliver, blah, blah, blah. And it could be replicates. It could be the same message that you're sending in a given month or in a given week or whatever. So you have your own networking goals, not to reach quantity, but to reach quality with purpose. So you go like, what is it that I need to achieve in my career right now? I want to achieve this and this and that. And one of the things I will achieve them, for example, for example, I want to get a new job. For example, how do I get a new job? Let me leverage my network. So how are you going to reach out to people to let them know that you're looking for a new job without telling them that you're looking for a new job? How can you do it in a subtle way, in an informal way? Back to the point of networking is a long game, is an investment play, right? It's not a, a quick thing. So you need to be proactive setting networking goals. So when you need somebody's help or when you need access to some opportunity, you, you have that access, all right? I have 10 immediate actions to share with you guys and then we're gonna pause, take questions until the end of the session. Those are like tips or immediate things you can do right now, super practical stuff. Some of them are taken from books, some of them uh, have been taught by mentors or experts and some of them are just individual efforts that that turned out to be uh, valid and they actually worked and they were effective the first thing is interact with all linkedin posts any post that you see interact put an emotion like you know um, um what do you call this um like the, the, the reaction, all emoji. right? Yes, the emoji, thank you very much. You put a reaction and put a comment because the person who posted will see your name, will see that you commented. And this will also reflect in the reach. So it will tell your network that you have commented on somebody's, um, um, uh, what do you call this, um, post. And that eventually increases the visibility of your profile because your activity on LinkedIn is high now. So that in SEO and algorithm and stuff, so that increases the visibility of your profile. So it's not only for you to be able to network effectively, it's a fantastic networking tool, because people are gonna love you. Like see, every time I post, they acknowledge or they share 
or they um, uh, share something like share the post or share something uh, um, even more to build on what I said or ask me a question in the comment, right? All these things. So people post on LinkedIn because they need engagement. So if you give them engagement, circle of concern, right? They want engagement, give them engagement and now they like you. Now you're charismatic to them, right? They start doing the same to you. So now you're getting engagement on your posts. So that's a, a good way to network on LinkedIn. And this is something you can do now, right? After the session, just go to your LinkedIn feed and start, you know, just chatting with people, comment, react, and comment, react, and comment, and all of that. The second thing you can do is keep a calendar of key events, recurrent events. Go to your friends at work, not friends, go to HR at work and ask them to give you all the birthdays, all the work anniversaries, and have it mark on, marked on your calendar. Every time you network with somebody on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever social media it is, or you meet somebody, somebody introduces you to somebody, just take one piece of information about this person's birthday or work anniversary or whatever it is, and send them uh, a happy birthday or a happy work anniversary every year. Or if you know what kind of public holidays that they celebrate, for example, whether it is a religious uh, occasion or it's a national occasion or something like that, and you know that they care about this occasion, you send them on that day. You have it marked on the calendar and you have a list of people that for this occasion, I'm going to send to that list, list of people, all right? Trust me, people really appreciate these things because not everybody does this. So if you do it, it's going to be very special and you, they will always remember you. So, uh, third thing you need to do is connect people with each other. When you meet someone and they tell you about themselves, circle of concerns, or asking them about themselves and they're telling you stuff, we're like, ah, oh, I know someone who can help. Let me connect you guys. The more you connect people together, the more you become connected eventually. So that is working smart, networking smart. Just connect people who know each other to each other. They will eventually connect you with other people. So if I connect two people together, those two will eventually connect me with three more people. And it branches out. I hope you guys are taking notes. These things work. The fourth um, uh, move, immediate action you can take right now is you start promoting others' work and profiles and updates and thoughts. Like I mentioned, you share somebody's work. Somebody has an achievement, you share and you go like, I'm proud of you or this is fantastic or this is inspiring and stuff like that. Especially things that have to do with people's personal achievements. Like it's not someone... For example, sharing about their company's achievements, you're sharing about the company. It's more about you sharing about them because you want to win their hearts. You don't want to promote the company. You want to promote their achievement, right? Now, number five, provide feedback on others' work voluntarily. You know that this website is somebody's work. You go to this website, send them two lines, just two lines. Hey, I saw your website. It looks fantastic, man. Uh, I would do this and this and that. Just thought of sharing. Uh, it looks great. Um, uh, I hope we connect soon, blah, blah, blah. That's it. They're going to take the feedback or at least they're going to appreciate that you took the time and effort to do that. Number six, when you communicate, communicate with confidence. Do not communicate in a way that lands with the other person that you need something, that you are in a weak position. Always communicate with confidence that you have something to give. You have something to provide. You realize your value and you are here to provide value. When you sit in an interview, when you sit in a dinner, when you sit in whatever setup it is, you are there to communicate your worth and your value and your experience. And nobody has the right to think of you as someone in need or someone too junior to speak or, 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 or. Specifically yourself. Don't, don't, don't give yourself these limiting thoughts. You're much more valuable than you think. You're much more valuable than you think. And you always need to remind yourself, what is it that you're bringing to the table? In whatever it is, in a relationship, in a business context, even personally with your family or whatever, what is it that I am bringing to the table? Without me, what will be missing? And do more of what you find out that, hey, I'm providing value. Now I realize that's my value. This is my talent. That's my purpose. I'm going to do more of that. I'm going to do more of that. Right? Communicate with that confidence. Don't, don't use might or I think or I hope or, you know, use action verbs. 
I believe this is this and this and this and that. No, uh, my experience tells me that this is not the, how things work because you want to build trust. If you want to build trust, you cannot build trust with a tone of hesitation. You see where I'm coming from? You need, if you want people to trust you, you need to sound like you trust yourself, like you have confidence. Number seven of the eight, of the, of the 10, engage with your network circle over Google and chat GPT. What does that mean? Naturally, we go to ask AI, right? I have a question, I go and I type the question and they give me the answer and I got it. If it's not too urgent, use it as an opportunity to go ask a mentor or ask an expert or, you know, I'm working on this document. Is it better to position the summary in the beginning or at the end? Well, as an expert, what would you tell me? I don't know, over WhatsApp or LinkedIn messages or whatever it is, and they will tell you and they will be happy that you're asking them. But very subtly, right? Like you're not asking them for consultancy, very subtly, but they, you keep, you maintain that relationship so that they will also come to you if they need something, right? The more you listen and ask questions, the more charismatic you become because you're letting them talk. You're not telling them what you think. You're allowing them to share what they think. And that makes people feel good when they're allowed to share what they think. Rama mentioned, but Rama dropped, she mentioned earlier, you smile always. When I was talking about Princess Diana, you smile always. Come across as a positive person, determined person, you're confident, so there's no reason to be sad. So you're always happy and you're always cheerful and you're always energetic and you're turned on. That's the impression, the mental picture people take of you, that you smile. And last but not least, speak positively. Try to avoid when you're networking, generally, try to avoid whining, complaining, sharing uh, bad news, right? Try to always be positive, action-oriented, looking to the future, right? That kind of tone. Wherever you go, always present yourself as a person who is positive and who is talking about the future. What are we going to do now? Let's do this and let's do this. And let's... You're full of uh, energy and hope and, and, and um, uh, proactivity, right? And optimism. Now you come across as a person that people want to talk to, people want to be connected to, people find value in connecting to, and people um, uh, would start trusting you. And now you are a networked person, you're a connected person. How are these actions landing with you before we move to the very last piece of the session? How is this landing with you? Let me stop the share for a second and ask, Any takeaway so far out of this? Hello. Omar says, very helpful. That's good to hear. Now this is interesting. Eddie says, thanks, thanks to you. Kevin says, very helpful. Fantastic. Let's, uh, let's play a game. So Dipto says directional and insightful, very good. Hafsa says the takeaway is networks can be an amazing source of new perspectives and ideas to help you in your upcoming roles, 100%. Hassan says that's knowledgeable. This is fantastic. This is fantastic, guys. Uh, I have a few questions. First question. Imagine, imagine that you are at a business dinner. How would you network? How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself starting a conversation, introducing yourself with people you don't know, leaving with healthy, uh, strong relationships? How are you building trust over a business dinner? Give me sentences you would say, not ideas, sentences you would say, or specific behaviors you would do in a business dinner. How do you see this? How do you see yourself networking in business dinner?
think circles of concern, think positioning yourself as a valuable, knowledgeable person, think you want to win people's heart, think you want to speak to everybody in the place. If you don't know, please say in the chat, I don't know how to do this. Hafsa says, first step, lift up your bros, say hi to them, ask them how they've been lately, ask if they need any help. Namarak says, hi, how are you? It's Namarak here. Uh, would like to know more about your work. I love that one. Because now you're making them talk, right? About something they care about. Very good, very good. Very good opening uh, sentence. It's a good way of breaking the ice. Hafsa, back to your point, you say hi to them, you ask them how they've been lately and then ask them if they need any help, they will say no, thank you. Make it more specific, ask them about something specific, an open-ended question about something specific and not generic, like don't ask them about the weather, that's such a cliche, right? But for example, if you ask them about the place, for example, you go like, is this the sort of place you usually go to or you would rather have different type of food, you know, or different setup? You go like, man, it's too loud here. You go like, ah, so you don't like loud places. You'd rather be calm. And, you know, and now you're talking about them again. How would you guys network if you were in a conference, business conference, public speeches and keynotes and panel discussions and stuff like that? How would you... How would you network? So imagine people are coming in to attend the session. The session is done. People are leaving and then they're picking snacks. And then eventually there is lunch as in an open buffet and people just go with the plate and they take the food. And then sometimes there are workshops with the workshops when you sit on a round table, every four and five people together on a table, for example, that kind of event. How would you network? I think you introduce yourself and uh, then you ask them where they come from or what they do mm -hmm. about their, something about their background. Mm -hmm. And you can maybe just compliment uh, a certain question they asked during the conference or. Very good. Very good. And, and this is when listening part comes from the, from the things we mentioned, right? Like you need to be listening very carefully. And now you know you're talking to them about something they said. Fantastic, fantastic. Very well played. Very well played. Uh, Hafsa says, ask them if they've attended uh, my workshop. And they will say, uh, well, it was not bad, but uh, we've seen better. So Dipto says, in a conference, pick up the conversation on a topic of the conference. Yes. And you ask them, what did they think about it? Right? Very good, very good. Hassan says, share social handle at the end of that event. That's a must. Hassan, that's a must. Very good. So you make sure that you leave the conversation, leaving them a business card or a virtual business card, or you connect with them on spot if that's an option. Fantastic, fantastic. How about you are in a formal celebratory kind of event? So for example, uh, you're opening a new factory, for example or a new, uh, the new office or whatever. And there are a lot of colleagues or there are external people coming in, government officials or uh, leaders from other companies or the management team of the mother company, I don't know, in, in Europe or the States or whatever. And then they come to open the office, for example, and then you're there and they don't know you. How are you going to build a healthy network with them? How are you going to approach them and network with them? Hafsa says, ask them to take pictures with me and upload it on a professional app. Awesome. Smart. They will always remember you. If you tag them on LinkedIn and then they have a picture with you, very good, very good. And then how are you going to build on that? How are you going to keep the conversation going?
Bessel says, welcome them, make them feel appreciated and take them on a tour around the place. Wow. If you're able to do that, you are the person taking them around. That's fantastic. They will remember you always. Or just offer it to do so even if you don't end up. Yes. And offer it in a way. And remember the confidence? You offer it in a confident way. It's so good to have you visit. And you need to mention the word visit. Why? Because this is your place. You work here. They're visitors. How do you like our home? You're now establishing in their heads, I'm not junior. I'm, I own this place. I don't care if you come from the headquarters. So now they feel like this person um, uh, unconsciously is sound powerful. Would you like me to welcome to our home? So good to have you here. Would you like uh, to see around? Not would you like me to show you around? You see the difference? Would you like to see around? Make them say, yes, I want to see around. You were like, I can show you. So you see how it's positioned? I am providing value. I'm not asking you to allow me to show you. No, no, no. If you want to see something, if you feel the need to see around, then I can help you see around. You see what I mean? That's the confidence I mean. Um, Hassan says, take and share picture with them and tag them. Very good. Very good. Hafza shared the, uh, something very similar as well. And what about, so let's go to a different, a different um, uh, setup. What about a business presentation where it's like a town hall? A town hall happens in big companies where the entire company comes together in a big event. And then there is some sort of a presentation where teams are talking about their work or the management team is talking about strategic uh, future goals and, and all of these things, right? You don't necessarily know everybody, but you know that because people are working hybrid or sometimes working from home or this and this and that. So maybe you know people, but you haven't had the chance to meet them in person or something like that. How would you make the best out of this networking event? Have to have grab a chair for them and ask them to sit politely. If they're standing and you feel that they don't have a place and you bring somebody a chair to sit, they would very much appreciate it. They would very much appreciate it. Very good, very good. If, if that's what you mean, is that's a really nice gesture. Very good. Very good. Any other ideas? Let us know if you have more ideas. And then if you are in an airport and you're standing in a long queue and you want to start a conversation with somebody that you saw an indication that you have something in common. For example, for example, you are in product and you are casually passing by them and then you heard them say, no, 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 this is not what the product roadmap said. That product roadmap said that the sprint is happening when I don't know. Ah. They do something very similar to what I do. How are you going to strike this conversation? Without making it seem or look like you were um, like ears dropping because you sincerely accidentally heard them say that. How would you network? If you don't have ideas, say I don't have ideas. I will give you ideas. Kilin says no idea. Thank you for asking. Hassan says I don't have an idea. Hmm. You are standing in a queue in an airport and someone was on the phone and you want to start a conversation with them because there's something similar between the two of you. How do you start this conversation? Sadipta so says, share a pain point which is topical. Probably the flight is delayed, etc. Hmm. And ask it in a way that has to do with the with the with the problem, right? 
the, the, the way the, the, like you accidentally heard they're talking about. So for example, if they are in logistics or if they are in service management or something like that, they go like, man, I really don't understand how these people think of priorities here. And they'll go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, this is not the way to set priorities. And you go like, yeah, like I don't even know what tools they use. Like they don't even, I don't think they use this software or that software. And then the person will look at you and they go like, what do you do again? You go like, I do this and this and this and that. And they go like, I do something very similar. You go like, oh yeah, what do you do? And then you get them to talk, right? So that could be one thing. Namarik uh, says, ask about the flight gate maybe and start from there. You could, you could, have, hey, where is the gate? They go like, the gate eight is this way. Like, uh, by the way, are you in product? Just like that, are you in product? Because I heard you say product roadmap. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, but I heard you say, I am in product too. What do you do? Hmm, yeah, tell me. I don't know. And then it turns into a 10 minutes conversation. You connect on LinkedIn. It's somebody you saw in the airport. It would might turn eventually to be like a, another business opportunity. You never know. You're now entering a completely different network um, spider web, right? Which is fantastic. You have now gained access to a network somewhere you will never have, have access to. And may I share one last personal story before we conclude the session after taking your questions, of course. Uh, can I share one more personal experience? Yes, please. Thank you for allowing me. Um, if you go to that website, This is a company called Global Class, all right? And Global Class is, uh, has been put together by these two people here that you see here. This, his name is Klaus, and this is Aaron. Klaus and Aaron had a company uh, called 10X Innovation in Silicon Valley. If you guys know Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley is a um, um, the, the hub or the tech hub in the States, in California, where the major tech companies in the world are headquartered. So Google is there and Apple is there. And like, you know, if you're in Silicon Valley, then you, you're doing tech and you're doing startups and you know, you're all over the place with innovation and all. The company they built, 10X Innovation, was to support the in, in a consultancy manner, all of these tech companies. So they were consulting the companies I told you guys about now. And then they started to write a book and the book is about international expansion, okay? International expansion and global like go-to market strategies and stuff like that, global scaling and all of that. I mentioned I come from a talent uh, background and now I'm working in edtech. So what they're doing is completely different, right? Are you guys following? And by the way, I'm Egyptian and I live in Dubai. So I have nothing to do with the States at all, right? If you go to this website here and you click on join community here, and then you scroll down a little bit, and then you ask yourself, what is he doing here? He shouldn't be here. What, what, how did he come to know these people? The airport story that I told you guys is true. So I was ears dropping. They were doing some consultancy to um, uh, to a company, and then I heard Klaus. It was Klaus speaking on the phone, and and Klaus said something about L and D. And then I picked the conversation up. I said, "What do you need? I'm an L and D expert. What do you need?" Just like that. And we started talking, talking, talking. We stayed in touch. They built this company, and then they asked me to be the city lead in Dubai. And now I'm the city lead of Global Class in Dubai. I'm sharing these stories to tell you that these things work. I'm only sharing them to say that these things actually work, these tips I shared with you. So as we reach the end of the session, a quick round of recap. What did we, what did we cover today? Number one, networking is about building and maintaining relationships. That's number one. Number two, you network with the aim of building trust. You want people to trust in, to trust you and believe in you. And know that you have value, credible value to provide. That's number two. Number three, who should you network with? You should network with people who have um, um, uh, also added value 
or, or value to add to you. So we spoke about peers, we spoke about mentors, we spoke about experts, we spoke about sponsors, right? Um, um, always make sure that you are well connected with different, with different kinds of people. How do you do it? You do it proactively, you do it charismatically, you think about other people's circles of concern and you go from there. What, what is the, their problem? How can I help? How can I give a push? How can I be positive? And I play a role there in a confident tone, in a, in a positive tone, with an open manner. Remember, yes, man, in an open manner. And then um, you're now open to opportunities. You're open to network and make sure the 10 immediate steps or the 10 immediate actions, if you find value in them, just go start engaging on LinkedIn, start uh, uh, co congratulating people for the birthdays, sending them wishes, uh, pick up uh, conversations on weddings or on uh, new offices uh, openings or on airports or whatever. And always make sure that you're not limiting yourself with the fact that ah, networking is not for me or I'm not sociable or this or this or that. It's a skill. You learn the skill. It's an investment. It makes your professional life a better place. That was it for the session. May I have uh, may I have some questions, please? And also the um, feedback poll is launched. So please take two seconds to just give us a star rating how you found the session. Thank you. Uh, Isuru is asking about the recording. The recording is going to be shared right after... Uh, or maybe by tomorrow morning, you'll receive an email with a link to the recording that that will happen. Any further questions, further feedback, please share. Thank you for coming, Eli. It was so good having you here. And guys, by the way, if you need more support or more help in that topic, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one sessions. Let me get you the link. Give me one second. I'll share with you the link where you can uh, book a, um, a conversation for us. If you, there is something specific you would like to talk about um, confidentially, of course, uh, those sessions are not recorded. They're super confidential. Um, I am a professional coach. Like I am certified in everything. So you can trust me. I, I might be able to help if you need, if you need any help with that networking topic. It could be... Um, it could be uh, internal, something internal is blocking you, or it could be a skill externally. There's a skill that you need to learn. By internally, I mean something like a belief or a limiting belief, you know, or like insecurity or hesitation at some point, or you, you're not sure about yourself, or you're not, you're not sure where to start, how to get this together. Um, book us. We will say we'll have the conversation. Um, I promise. I promise to help when I can. So to saying how to network during a webinar on networking on lighter note only ask there are a couple of, of things you can do here one ask about the list the participants list Two, share on your network that you're attending the webinar so people will tell hey i'm there as well three ask a lot of questions in the chat if they are opening uh, the chat uh, ask questions in the chat and make sure that your name on zoom is your name that you use everywhere like your first name and last name to choose everywhere on LinkedIn and, and uh, on your portfolio and at work and on your business cards and everything, right? So people would also see that you're asking a lot of questions. And then by the end, it's completely normal. It's a very professional behavior at the end. Like now, for example, if now, right now, you're like, guys, it was so good to be here with you guys. I do this and this and that. If you didn't have the opportunity to mention what, what is exactly that you do or your area of focus. So for example, you say, I, I do marketing, for example. They go like, hi guys, um, uh, so was good, it was so good to be here with you. Uh, I do marketing, by the way, if you're operating in the same space, let's connect together and, and you drop your LinkedIn um, uh, URL. People are going to come and network with you and everything. And you will encourage them for them to start sharing as well. You start the trend and then people are networking to everybody. Thank you, Manu. That's extremely insightful. I've never thought like that. Uh, no, that's, that, that's a nice pitch. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Yeah. Rabia, you're welcome. Any further questions?
Mubarak says, thank you for the session. I have a question. When there are workshops and there are people going and sharing their CV like job applicants, how should I start a conversation? Give me more context. You say there are workshops and there are people going to the workshops, I assume, and then they're sharing their CV like job applicants. How should I start a conversation? You mean you want to give out your CV? Is this what you want to do? Basil, thank you for coming. And the Marika can always unmute and just explain. Like giving out CVs, yes, and you're supposed to talk about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, remember when we spoke about resume the last session on Thursday and about portfolios when we talked about personal branding the day before? The best practice here is not, like in workshops and stuff like that, the best practice is not to share your resume. The best practice is to share your portfolio and the difference or your personal website. And the difference here is, you share your work, you share your presence. Resume is a job application tool. If you want to build trust and you want to network and you want to position yourself that I am adding value, you know, I am adding value. I am not looking for someone to help me guide the job. I am an expert. Now, if you want to come pitch me for a job, if you have an opportunity and you think I might help, let's start the conversation. But I am not, uh, I'm, I'm not the sort of person who would, advise people to go and just you know hand out the resume like um, um, a tissue i i i wouldn't i wouldn't advise that i don't see i've never seen um i've never seen a, a well-established professional or someone with strong personal brand or something like that do that go and give out their resumes it makes them mass basically what what i would uh, share is have your resume if that's the setup like if you are expected to have your resume with you then of course have the resume with you but always make sure that the primary sharing is you're sharing your portfolio you're sharing your presence your achievements your skill set your space the place where you have your testimonials and everything right you're sharing that i share my web I, I'll, I'll drop the website here when i when i uh it's, it's not super great. It's just, it makes people feel that there is a website and there is, you know, a digital presence and everything. This guy like has something going on, has his own universe and everything. That's what I share. When people ask me for a resume, I have one ready on my phone and on the tablet and on the laptop and everywhere. I have the resume if they want. But what I the way I would introduce myself or the way I would leave something for somebody to check later would be a portfolio a place where they can see what this person is capable of, some testimonials, maybe people are vouching for you, how great you are working with the, and stuff like that. Um, and the way you should start a conversation, you start it backwards from a market need. Like if, if it's a job application kind of setup and like an, a mini career fair, these workshops are like meant to be mini career fairs and people are networking with the intent of finding a job. You start the conversation not by the job. Don't, don't speak about the job. Speak about the space. And speak about the, the person's life you're talking to. You go to a talent acquisition person standing there get, collecting CVs. And then you go like, how many CVs did you get there? Are you going to able to carry them or do you need help? And then they will start laughing. And then you go like, man, how, how do you get to see all of these CVs? Like, you need two uh, eyeglasses to go through all of this. And then they laugh and they go like, no, 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 we have... Uh, we have um, uh, technology, you know, we're using software to filter these CVs. Ah, now you're getting information, right? And you go like, ah, and how do I make sure that my application is relevant, if that's the case? How would you advise me to do that? And then they will start telling you. But you started the conversation not by asking a favor. You started the conversation by checking on them. Princess Diana situation, right? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I, I come here at 10. It's now almost 6 p.m. and you're still standing. Are you, do we need a chair? Like what's happening here? Not, not in too much, like not, not very too much intimate because they will know like you're trying to take something, you know, like there's something in it for you. Do it like in a, in, in a very human manner, in a very simple, subtle, honest, empathetic. Remember, empathy is important. So do it in an empathetic manner and then just make the conversation 
practical and interesting to them. Like you're trying to make their life easy. How can I want to apply to that job? How do I do it in a way that makes your life easy? Tell me. They will tell you. They'll just put the paper here. Yeah, but this is adding to the pile. Is that fine? They go like, yeah, just put the paper here. Okay, I'll put the paper here. I just send the application to this link. Just does it? Yeah. I'll send the application to that link. Because that means they are not interested in the conversation. But you need to start. Maybe they're interested in the conversation. Cool. We are eight minutes over time already. I believe we got the questions. You guys know how to find me now. You have the one-on-one -on -one link. You have the website. Um, I'm almost around. If you guys need anything in the world, just let me know. And thank you so much for coming. It was fantastic being with you guys again. Take care. And I'll see you hopefully next Thursday for another session. Take care, guys. So, Depto, thank you. Thank you for coming. Take care, Hafsa. Thank you. Rabia. Good night. Thank you so much, Millie. Good night. Good night to you. Killeen, see you. Bye, Namarat.